Howdy gamers, old gamer guy here. Steam World Build is a new colony building game, and if you watch my channel, you know I'm into that kind of thing. Starting a new game gives you a choice of five different destinations, which I guess have different properties, and then you can name your city, you can choose the default theme or one that's more Christmassy, and then we have the difficulty and some other options. Uh, this game is kind of a sci-fi western steampunk sort of an aesthetic, and we're actually playing as some robots. Our objective is to build a rocket and escape from this planet, and we actually have some AI that's helping us do that. The, uh, the UI is pretty simple. Hitting down on the digital pad takes you to that lower menu. Hitting up takes you to that upper menu, and then left and right will allow you to select things within those menus. We start off in build mode, but if I hit square, that takes us into select mode and gives us a cursor in the middle of the screen. And then hitting square again takes us back into build mode. And build mode is apparently what brings up that lower menu down there. And you can see that there is something highlighted in that lower menu, and that's, uh, that's the tutorial. That's what we need to do next, and that is uh, residential areas for the workers. We need workers in a game like this because we're going to have to build things and we're going to have to uh, collect resources. So we need manpower, or rather robot power, to do that. So we can build a few residentials, as the game calls them, and then we have to uh, connect everything with roads. That's a pretty common mechanic for a game like this. And another common mechanic in a game like this is that your workers have needs, and those needs will affect their morale, and I think that will affect their productivity. So here I am putting in a general store and that will uh, satisfy at least some of the needs for these, uh, these robot citizens. And we have reached a new milestone which unlocks new buildings and also new needs for your workers. If we select a residential then we can get a look at uh, some statistics their needs, their satisfaction level, and uh, the income that they will generate. We can see our available workers at the top of the screen. And when I build this forester, you can see that number went down. So a number of those available workers are now working at the forester. Uh, yeah, we need workers to build things, but we also need raw materials. So we have a forester working there, and then uh, we will shortly have also a, uh, a lumber mill. And uh, here I am putting in a warehouse because we need to store things and also distribute things uh, as they are needed. And all of this is pretty standard for a game like this. It feels pretty familiar. The UI feels pretty good, I think. Uh, it seems to run very smoothly so far. Obviously, my, uh, my colony is not very large just yet, but uh, so far, anyway, this game is running very smoothly. But now it's time to add a service shop to our colony here. This is another thing that will uh, fulfill our workers' needs and keep them happy. And you can see when I put it next to the road a number of houses will be highlighted. That means that those are the houses that will be affected by this thing. So uh, this service shop will affect houses within a particular radius of it, I think. <laughs> uh, if you watch my channel, you know that I often speculate incorrectly, but I think that's the case. I think it's a radius of effect. But never mind that, because the game is telling us it's time to build a cactus farm, but uh, instead I got a little distracted for a while, messing around with decorations, trying to make a little more pleasant uh, surroundings for our bots. 
but I finally realized that I needed to grow the population some more. I mean, it's telling us right over there that we need to have a certain population and we need to fulfill uh, the, the needs of that population. Uh, I totally misplaced that residential over there, but never mind that because it's time to look at the administration window. If you hit triangle, you can bring up some uh, info about your colony. You can keep track of the balances of your various uh, resources, and you can look at a graph, and you can choose which, uh, which things are going to be represented on that graph. So we, ha we now have a shortage of cactus water, so uh, we need to build a cactus farm. We do not have the available boards, but I can go ahead and schedule that construction. Clicking R3 will cycle through the, uh, the game's two speeds. So you have regular, you have slightly faster, and you have paused. The fastest one is still not very fast. Clicking on the cactus farm will allow us to place some fields and each farm can have up to three fields and you can kind of place them around how you want them and now I am building a charcoal kiln this is all my first hour of gameplay highly edited I'm sure you have uh, figured out by now but never mind that because it's time to repair this broken down train station and now we can start to get supplies from regular visits from the train. Uh, you can see that there is now a timer on the train station. So that's, uh, that's how far we have until the train arrives. And we can continue to increase our population. But now we need some engineers. So we have to upgrade some of these houses into engineer quarters. And then, of course, uh, as we do that, we are losing workers, but we are gaining engineers. And the engineers are now visible in the upper menu there. But you can see if their needs are not fulfilled, then you get those uh, symbols on the houses. But those needs can fluctuate over time. And so uh, as my supply of charcoal increases, everybody is suddenly content again and uh, then I can take advantage of that contentedness to go ahead and build something over here we have an abandoned mine shaft and we'll get back to that in a little while there you can see uh, everybody's unhappy again <laughs> but never mind that the train is arriving so clicking on the train brings up this menu uh, we can set up a trade which I guess uh, will just bring the same goods in and export the same goods out every time but I did not set one of those up I did however purchase something from the item shop production speed sounded like a, uh, a generally good thing to have and I do have the funds to purchase that so I went ahead and did just that so no, now that one is gone but I can go into the building menu and I can put that item in one of these buildings here. And so I figured the best place for that would be our uh, forester over here. So now we'll have a, uh, a better supply of lumber to make boards. But never mind that because it's time to repair this mine shaft. We have to uh, connect everything with our dirt road. I could have just taken this road straight ahead into that other street, but instead I brought it over this way. And now we can connect things up here. And now we can actually repair this mine shaft. And this is uh, an interesting thing about this game because you can see our available build area here is not that large. Maybe it expands over time. But now we can go into the underground by pressing R1 and hitting down on the digital pad. All right, we made it. We ought to set up some quarters for our miners and get started on digging. 
I feel the place shaking, though. Best we dig slowly. Indeed. The planet is becoming more unstable by the moment. Proceed with caution. Some of the voice acting reminds me of the TV show Vikings. Uh, but now we can go into select mode and we can select that object. That is a chest. And we can open up that chest to get some gold nuggets. There are, uh, there are objects like that in the, uh, the above ground part of the game as well. But uh, this mine is instable. And so the first thing we need to do is build a pillar to keep things from uh, collapsing on us. So now that we have done that, we can build uh, some space for some miners because we have to have uh, a place for these people or these robots <laughs> to live down here underground. And there will be different types of underground workers. But first we need to make some mining quarters. And so we just need to drag out a space that is, uh, I think, nine squares will give us one miner. So I have one miner there right now because that's all, uh, that's all this open space will allow. But now I can go into the, uh, the lower menu and activate a shovel and uh, clear some of this other stuff out of the way and, and I can get some gold in some spaces as I clear it away. But we can uh, mark out a space that will be cleared away by our worker and there our worker is automatically getting to work. And now we have uh, uh, a scrap vein is what that icon is showing us there. But we're still clearing out some space. And you can see that it is leaving some rubble behind on the floor. And that will have to be cleared away before we can use this space. But once it's all clear, we can set aside some more space for our miners. And now we have three miners. And that was the goal that we were building toward there. So they're automatically all getting to work. And now we need prospectors. And so we're going to have to grow our engineer population because it's uh, engineers that are turned into prospectors. And of course, uh, you know, I like a good beer myself and a good whiskey, sometimes uh, some wine. So I figured our, uh, our robots would appreciate a saloon. So I went ahead and built one of those. But eventually, I had enough engineers that I could recruit a prospector, and we're going to do that the same way we did with the miners. We're just going to drag out some space for prospector quarters, and we will get a number of recruits based on how much space we drag out. So this is going to give me one prospector, and they will automatically at least try to get to work. But uh, the next step is to build a tool maker. So I'm going to build that close to our mine shaft here. And uh, then once we have that, we can uh, build a pickaxe maker. And we are building toward uh, extracting an ironium vein, apparently, down there in the mine shaft. But I'm going to place my pickaxe maker right here across from the warehouse and uh, yeah I put a warehouse here I put another uh, I put the tool maker right there I think I have two or three warehouses at this point and I think I, I have more than one forester and uh, more than one lumber mill but now we are recruiting a mechanic so same thing dragging out some space now I have a mechanic and now I can build a workshop. So once again, we just drag out some space and now we have a workshop. And now I can build a scrap extractor. And then once I have the scrap extractor, that will work on that scrap vein. But we are approaching the end of my first hour of gameplay, so I better wrap this up here. 
Uh, I do like this. If you can't tell, it seems like a very mellow experience. Uh, although there are enemies, apparently. I have not seen any sign of that in my first hour, but there are enemies to be dealt with eventually. And like I said, we are building toward building a rocket and escaping this planet. This is a, uh, a $30 game, so uh, if this looks interesting, check it out. Uh, I'm not sure what's coming up next on the channel, but for now, as always, thank you for watching.